I want to say something that I never thought I'd actually talk about. Before we wrote Semper Eternal, our drug addict, I was addicted to a drug called I was on it for years and I was off my head. I still wish that I was someone else on, you know, some days. And it's the fact that I'm still rejecting myself. I still, I'm still not fully accepting who I am. Ollie Sykes isn't just a frontman of Bring Me The Horizon. He's one of the most polarizing, controversial, and innovative figures in modern rock music. From the chaotic beginnings of a teenager fronting a deathcore band to becoming a globally recognized icon, Ollie's journey has been anything but smooth sailing. His battles with addiction, public controversies, and relentless desire to break free from genre constraints have shaped his career and, in turn, reshaped the music world around him. This is the story of how Ollie Sykes changed music forever. Oliver Scott Sykes was born in 1986, and Ollie's childhood wasn't a rock star cliche. He grew up in a relatively stable family environment, moving from Kent to Sheffield when he was young. Music was always a part of his life, but the metal scenes of Northern England in the early 2000s became his real playground. By 2004, at just 18 years old, Ollie had formed Bring Me The Horizon with a group of friends from Sheffield. Their early days were filled with local gigs and demos, but it wasn't long before they became the kings of MySpace. The early internet fame propelled Ollie into the spotlight and soon he wasn't just a local metal kid he was the poster boy for a new generation of metalcore and deathcore fans bring me's 2004 ep this is what the edge of your seat was made for quickly went viral if that was even a thing back in the day and despite it sounding like it was recorded on a toaster this propelled them to a whole new level of fame but with this newfound attention the first signs of ollie's chaotic lifestyle began to emerge ollie's rise to fame came hand in hand with controversy by 2006 bring me had released Count Your Blessings, an album that cemented them in the deathcore scene. But while Ollie's growling vocals and the band's heavy riff won them fans, his offstage behaviour was beginning to spiral out of control. Ollie developed a reputation for heavy drinking, drug use, and basically a complete fuck it attitude. An attitude that, while feeding into the band's bad boy image, was a sign of problems to come. One of the most infamous incidents occurred in 2007 after a gig at Rock City in Nottingham. Ollie was accused of urinating on a fan after an altercation on the band's tour bus. The allegation came along with claims that he verbally abused the fan, pulling her homophobic slurs, and that a bandmate threw a bottle at another girl, causing injury. While the charges were eventually dropped due to a lack of evidence, the damage to Ollie's reputation had already been done. And this wasn't an isolated event either. Ollie's reputation for being combative and reckless on stage, often encouraging fans to engage in violence or to pull their tampons out. His words, not mine. Pull the <laughs> earned him both a cult following and a growing list of enemies. But behind the scenes, Ollie was beginning to lose control. By 2008, Ollie's life was spiraling. The success of Suicide Season, an album that saw Bring Me The Horizon experiment with more electronic and melodic elements, put even more pressure on Ollie to perform. This was also the period where his addiction issues became impossible to ignore. Ollie became heavily dependent on a dissociative anaesthetic that led to increasingly erratic behaviour. His drug use, combined with the pressures of touring and public scrutiny, really did push him to the brink. In his own words, Ollie described the period as a time when he was lost, using drugs to himself from the stress of his rising fame and the expectations placed upon him. By 2012, his addiction had reached a critical point. He was using daily and the band feared for his health and for their future. During this period, Ollie became a self-destruction symbol. His erratic behaviour made headlines, but for those close to him, it was a sign that something needed to change and fast. 2013 marked a crucial turning point in Ollie's life. He entered rehab for his addiction, a decision that likely saved his life and his career. But his recovery process was not easy. Ollie has spoken openly about the mental and physical toll that getting clean took on him. He described feeling as if he had to rebuild himself from the ground up. I want to say something that I never thought I'd actually talk about. Before we wrote Semper Eternal, I was a fucking drug addict. I was addicted to a drug called I was on it for years and I was fucked off my head. And um, my band wanted to kill me, my parents wanted to kill me, my fucking brother wanted to kill me, everyone wanted to fucking kill me, they wanted to fucking take me to hell, but they didn't. And when I got out of that rehab, I didn't want to fucking scream anymore, I wanted to sing it from the fucking rooftops. And it's all thanks to you, so thank you very much.
This period of recovery coincided with the release of Semper Eternal, one of Bring Me The Horizon's most iconic albums. The album marked a dramatic shift in the band's sound, moving away from deathcore completely into a more polished blend of electronic rock and metal. Ollie's vocals, once defined by harsh growls and screams, had evolved, and now he was singing more, showing a vulnerability that was new for the band. Jordan Fish was a key part of this evolution too, as he had not long joined the band before they released Semper Eternal. Jordan has gone on record to say that while he was enthusiastic about learning, at the time, Holly basically couldn't sing for shit, which is insane to think based on the standards of his vocals in the present day. But Semper Eternal wasn't just a musical evolution, it was a personal one for Oli. The album's themes of rebirth and recovery mirrored his own struggles, and for the first time, Oli began to embrace a more introspective side of himself, both in his lyrics and his public persona. Just as Oli seemed to be finding his footing, more shit was just around the corner. In 2015, Bring Me The Horizon released That's The Spirit, another departure from their heavier roots. The album was both a critical and commercial success, but behind the scenes, Ollie's personal life was falling apart. His marriage to his ex-wife became a source of public scrutiny after rumours began to surface that she had cheated on him. The couple's highly public divorce in 2016 added even more stress to Ollie's life. He used That's The Spirit and later 2019's Ammo as cathartic outlets to process the pain and betrayal he felt. By this point, Ollie was stuck in no man's land. Fans who would follow Bring Me The Horizon from their early days of breakdowns and guttural screams were frustrated by the band's new direction. Ollie was accused of selling out and abandoning the metalcore scene, but for Ollie, this evolution was a necessary part of his survival, both as an artist and as a human being. One of the most publicised controversies in Ollie's career came in 2016 during the Enemy Awards. The feud between Bring Me The Horizon and Coldplay began when fans noticed that Coldplay's album artwork for A Head Full Of Dreams closely resembled the artwork for Semper Eternal. Ollie himself even fanned the flames, accusing Coldplay of copying their design. While the feud might have stayed as an online spat, it escalated dramatically when Bring Me The Horizon performed at the Enemy Awards. During their performance of Happy Song, Ollie jumped off the stage and directly onto Coldplay's table, sending drinks and food flying everywhere. And if I'm honest, this is one of my favourite Bring Me The Horizon moments ever. While Ollie later claimed that the stunt wasn't planned, which is a load of bollocks, it became a defining moment of the band's rebellious image, further pushing Bring Me The Horizon into the public eye. Ollie's most recent work, especially with Ammo and the Posthuman EP series, has showcased his ability to continually reinvent himself. Ammo dealt with deeply personal issues, specifically with his divorce, through a mix of electronic pop, rock and even trap influences. The album received mixed reactions, with longtime fans feeling alienated by the shift toward mainstream pop, while newer audiences appreciated the boundary pushing approach. The post-human project, on the other hand, has been a return to heavier sounds, but with a twist. Ollie and the band have embraced a more genre-fluid approach, incorporating everything from metal to pop-punk to hyper-pop, collaborating with artists like Baby Metal and Ed Sheeran. But all good things must come to an end, and a figure that was instrumental in the evolution of Ollie Sykes' career was about to completely fuck the system. During the recording of Post Human Next Gen, things between Jordan Fish and Bring Me The Horizon hit a breaking point, and in late 2023, Fish officially left the band. And let's just say the fallout wasn't exactly a civil one. In fact, Ollie admitted that things had gotten pretty rough within the band, which led to the album's original September release date being pushed back due to unforeseen circumstances, which translation meant the band was falling apart. When the album finally did drop in May 2024, Fish was no longer a part of that lineup. So, what happened? According to Ollie, it wasn't just creative differences, but rather a complete shift in how the band approached writing. Over the years, Bring Me had turned into what Ollie called the Ollie and Jordan show, where the two of them basically ran the whole creative process, spending more time in computers and synths than actual guitars. The rest of the band found themselves sidelined, which naturally led to some frustration. When it came time to work on Next Gen, Ollie and the band decided to take a different route. Jamming out songs like they did in the old days instead of being hunched over laptops. This shift opened the door for other members to get more involved and 
exposed the underlying tension that had been building up for a while. Jordan was used to having a massive hand in shaping the band's sound, so this change in dynamics probably felt like the rug was being pulled right out from underneath him. While there's no juicy scandal or backstabbing drama, both sides have been pretty open about the fact that it wasn't exactly a smooth or friendly split. Jordan went his own way, saying he's grateful for the 11 years with the band and proud of everything that they've achieved. Ollie, on the other hand, admitted that they haven't spoken since, adding that there were some wounds that needed to heal before there could be any communication again. Despite all of this, Ollie has now become one of the most influential figures in modern rock and metal. In parts, without even knowing it, Ollie has inspired the next generation of artists to be more daring with their music, like for example Bad Omens. And if you want to learn more about Bad Omens, you should check out this video.